All right, we're continuing our Regents review. Unit 6, Kinetics, and Equilibrium. All right, first, Collision Theory. States that a reaction most likely to occur if reactant particles collide with the proper energy and orientation. Also states that the rate of chemical reactions, remember rate is speed. So the rate of chemical reaction depend on temperature, concentration, nature, of the reactants, surface area, and the presence of a catalyst. Okay. Higher temperature, faster rate of reaction. Higher concentration of reactants, faster rate of reaction greater surface area, which is usually equal to smaller particles, faster rate of reaction. For all three of these, the reason why it's a faster rate of reaction is more effective collisions. Okay. Now, a catalyst can speed up the rate of reaction. Okay. It provides an alternate pathway with lower activation energy. And we'll see a little bit more about that in just a bit. Okay. Now, some chemical and physical reactions can reach equilibrium. All right, so you can have chemical and physical equilibrium. Uh, if you take nitrogen and hydrogen, you can make ammonia. And that is an equilibrium reaction. Uh, if you have liquid water at zero degrees Celsius exactly, you'll have an equilibrium reaction between that and ice solid water. That would be a physical equilibrium. Now, if we add a stress to a reaction, that's going to cause a shift in equilibrium. And that is Le Chatelier's principle. Okay, so let's take our Haber process for making ammonia. Nitrogen and hydrogen, right, you have to put them under pressure. Right, these are all gases. You put them under pressure, and it's going to make ammonia and heat. So what Le Chatelier's principle says that if we, let's say, add more nitrogen, okay, add away, it's going to shift away from the stress we add. So if we add more nitrogen, it'll shift to the right because it shifts away. Okay, so if we add 
nitrogen, right? If we increase the concentration of nitrogen, we'll shift to the right. That means the things on the left, the other things on the left, hydrogen will decrease. Things on the right will increase. So ammonia will increase, and the heat given off will increase. If we increase the pressure, we have to remember pressure affects gases only. So we're going to count the moles of gas. On the left we have one, two, three, four moles of gas. On the right we have two moles of gas. Add away still applies. It'll shift away from the side with more moles of gas. So if we increase pressure, the nitrogen will decrease. The hydrogen will decrease. The ammonia will increase and the heat given off will increase. If we increase temperature, it shifts away from heat. Okay, so if we increase temperature, shift away from the side with heat. And the opposite all holds true. Add away some means if we remove something, it'll shift towards. Okay, that's Le Chatelier's principle. All right, next we have potential energy diagrams. Okay, this is the reaction coordinate. Kind of shows as the reaction takes place in time, very, very quickly, but in time nonetheless. And this is going to be the potential energy. So we have here the potential energy of the reactants. So this is the potential energy of the reactants. And in order for the reaction to take place, you have to put some energy in. That energy is the activation energy. So the activation energy is how much energy it takes to get from here to here. That is the activation energy energy. This is your activated complex. The potential energy of the activated complex is measured from the distance from zero to here. And it goes down to the potential energy of the products. Now the difference in the potential energy of the reactants and the potential energy of the products is called delta H. Delta H is equal to the potential energy of the products minus the potential energy of the reactants. It is called the heat of reaction. When delta H is negative, the reaction is exothermic. This is an exothermic reaction, where the products are lower in energy than the reactants. Now let's say we did this reaction in the presence of a catalyst that would lower the activation energy by providing an alternate pathway for the reaction. And the picture shows an alternate pathway with the lower activation energy. Now, in this case, it's an exothermic reaction. However, let's say this were an equilibrium reaction. If we go in reverse, in this case, the reverse, going that way, would be endothermic. Okay? The activation energy of the endothermic reaction, reverse reaction, is much higher than the activation energy of the forward. However, when we add a catalyst, it lowers the forward activation energy and the reverse activation energy. So a catalyst has no effect on equilibrium. Okay. Also can have an endo thermic reaction. In this case, the potential energy of the products is higher 
than the potential energy of the reactants. And we can see it's a very high forward activation energy. You can still use a catalyst, lowers the activation energy, but it doesn't change, right? In either case, the catalyst does not change our delta H. Delta H in this case is positive products minus reactants, so it is endothermic. The reverse would be exothermic. One thing, actually, I want to go back to, we are talking initially about equilibrium. All right, it's a very important thing to remember about equilibrium. When you have something at equilibrium, let's go back to our N2 plus H2 yielding NH3. Okay, equilibrium means the rates of the forward and the reverse reaction are equal. So rate equal. The concentration of each of these remains constant. Okay? Rate equal, concentration constant. All right. Last topic in this unit is entropy which is a measurement of disorder. Things in nature tend to seek more disorder. More disorder is an increase in entropy. We go from solid to liquid to gas. It is becoming more disordered as those molecules get further apart it is an increase in entropy. We go the other way from gas to liquid to solid. It's becoming more ordered, which is less disordered. That would be a decrease in entropy. Finally, systems in nature seek the perfect combination of lower energy, right, so that would be an exothermic reaction, and higher entropy. All right, that brings us to the end of our review for Unit 6. I will see you guys in school.